Welcome back everybody. It's something that we all can probably relate to. Remember going back to school when you were a kid and just how important it was to have the right backpack, clothes and supplies and a big part of putting your best foot forward on the first day, of course, those shoes. Yeah, all about the kicks. Well, Marcus you know. Rees from Taylor saw a need there. He's joining us now because you decided to step in and help. Marcus, thanks for being here. Thank you. So talk to us about um, what you've been doing. You have given new shoes to dozens of kids, but we want to back up. This actually started with your own personal obsession with sneakers. It did. Um, growing up, I just, I love sneakers. And we couldn't afford the nicest pair. And I also had a really difficult childhood. So even if we could, I was told, you don't deserve nice, nice shoes. And so going to school was really, um, it was tough for me to see everyone have, have nice shoes. And then I walk in with last year's pair. And um, I have that obsession ever since. You know, it's really uh, heartbreaking to hear you say that somebody told you as a child that you didn't deserve something like shoes. But what uh, is, is nice to hear and why we wanted to have you here is that you've taken that and done what your hat there says. You've healed by uh, making good out of it. And so fast forward now, you're an adult. This is like about a week ago. I mean, we're only talking just a few days ago. You're at the store buying shoes for your daughter and then this idea hits you. Explain how that happened. So we were school shopping and I was buying her probably her fourth pair of shoes, which was too many. And behind me, I could hear a father explaining to his daughter um, that they wouldn't be able to afford those shoes. And it hit me that I remember that feeling of not being able to, to show up with my best foot forward, literally. And I went home and God spoke to me about, why don't you do something about it instead of just waiting, you go do it. So I made a Facebook post in my community um, asking, is there any family that needs help? And then I went to bed and I woke up to 22 families asking for help. And so many community members asking, can I help? Can I give you a hundred bucks? Can I buy shoes? Um, it was unbelievable. So this has now become really a community wide project. Tell us how other people got involved. Uh, it was really unreal. So, um, that next day I had probably $2,500. I went shopping, um, I asked for the sizes and the gender, and I went line by line and met each need. And I went to Adidas and Round Rock, and I was walking with a big stack of shoes, and the manager goes, what are you doing? And she says, um, is this for a team? And I said, no. And she said, well, is it for the community? I said, yeah. And she offered me discounts off of every third pair of shoes I bought, which made the money go further and um, it's unreal. That's great, and we were just seeing a video of you uh, handing some shoes to uh, a person with, an officer with Taylor Police, so they also needed, uh, heard about it, and you gave them the shoes to give to another family, yes, so that's sir. great. So this turned from being something where you wanted to help, you know, maybe one child, into how many now? So as of this past Tuesday, we helped 49 kids. Wow. And we're talking, because I asked you earlier, I was like, so how long have you been doing this? And he said, oh, it's been a week. It was on the 14th, the 14th of August. Yeah. So he really worked, you really worked fast. The community yeah. really stepped yeah. up fast. And, and now, uh, you know, dozens of children have these shoes, which yeah. is great. And it is worth pointing out that this is really kind of your life's mission to help other people. You had a couple of nonprofits. Tell us about that. So I have the Taylor Area Tennis Association, um, which is, I'm a tennis coach, so it's, it's obvious why. And then I have the Break the Silence Movement. And with that nonprofit, we work to advocate and provide awareness and prevention for childhood sexual abuse. Um, and I'm a survivor myself. And so through this work, I'm able to heal part of my childhood one shoe at a time. The shoe campaign, and since it is only just about a week or a few days more than that old, uh, it doesn't have a name or anything like that. No. So what do you see for the future of it? So another nonprofit in town called the Good Life Taylor has reached out and the city of Taylor uh, has reached out and they want a partner. So what we're going to do, like we're gonna make it happen is every July we'll do an official drive. You have um, school supplies and backpacks, but as you said, no shoes. So this will be a yearly thing that we kick off in Taylor. We can't wait to see how you continue this into the future in Taylor and maybe even beyond too. So Marcus, thank you so much for being here today and thank you for the work you've been doing and really hustling over the last couple of weeks to, to make some kids school year. That's a great story. Mm -hmm. Nice kicks too, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> As the kids say, right? <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Marcus. We'll be back after the break. Thank you.